In this video, you're going to learn what the next generation JavaScript build tools look like, why you would want to use them, and of course, how to use them. We are also going to talk about advantages and disadvantages of each tool, so make sure you stay till the end of the video. Ok, let's slow down a bit. How are these new tools different from existing ones? Well, whether we use Webpack, Rollup or Parcel for development, these tools bundle our code together with node modules and run through build processes like Babel, TypeScript compilation or PostCSS, and then push the bundle code to our browser. This all takes a lot of work and can make development locally and bundling on the server very slow. New build tools, or rather bundlers, like Snowpack and Vite don't follow this model. Instead, they do everything kind of on the fly. They find an import statement and make a request to that module and only after this module has been requested, the tool applies the necessary transforms to this module on the fly. This ends up being much faster. With that said, here is our first tool on the list that we need to talk about, which in fact partially powers other tools. ESBuild was created by Evan Wallace, CTO of Figma by the way. Its main feature is that it provides a build step 10 times or even 100 times faster than node-based modules. At least that's what they claim. It doesn't provide that many developer conveniences that you could find in Webpack for example, although it has a pretty straightforward API, includes minification, TypeScript, JSX support, tree shaking and so on. In fact, let's build our small hello world app with it. So for each and every project, I'm going to create separate folders. So this one is going to be called ESBuild example. And let's create the folder, get inside the folder. And I'm also going to create package JSONs for every project in advance. That's why let's run npm init, answer all the questions. Now we have a package JSON with pre-filled default values. And the next step is actually installing ESBuild itself. For this, I'm going to run npm install ESBuild with the flag save minus dev so that the ESBuild actually is installed as a dev dependency. And as you can see, it actually popped up ESBuild version 0.14. And I'm going to install React and React DOM because our example actually react, um, relies on these two libraries. We're going to create a little or actually a small React app, um, which simply says hello world. I'm going to create a JSX file. Well, the root file, so I'm going to call it app.js and I paste the default uh, code uh, where I import React and server and I saying hello world and I render it, uh, basically render this component on the screen. Now, the next step is actually calling our bundler. So esbuild app JSX minus minus bundle so that the file is bundled and we specify the output direction directory and the file name as out.js. But if we don't have ESBuild installed locally, we actually need to put it into the packages and instead, which is actually um, comes in handy afterwards. You don't want to run your commands uh, globally. So let's put it here. Let's save it. And now when we run npm, uh, first of all, let's clean the terminal and run npm run build so that our app is built. As you can see on the left, out.js appeared. And if we look inside, it literally took React and React DOM and bundled everything together. But we can also search for hello world, which was actually in our code and what our app is about. And as you can see, it also appended hello world. And now we can actually add some extra options such as minify and source map, which will be obviously present if you're developing locally and minify, uh, you will need minification when you're deploying to production. Let's run the build again. And now let's look at our out.js and it's minified. And as you can see on the left, we also have out.js.map, which is basically the source map, which helps you to debug. And finally, let's run node out.js to see that our app is actually being rendered in the terminal. 
So if you open out.js in the browser, you should see the same thing. What I definitely noticed is that ES Build is a complete game changer when it comes to speed. It's going to be most useful in large code bases where the difference between ES Build and node based bundlers is the biggest. At the time of this video, ES Build is still on version 0.14, so I don't really recommend it for production websites as ES Build is still not that stable. If you need more from your build tool, then you might want to take a look at the next one, Snowpack, which actually uses ES Build under the hood. Snowpack is a build tool that was created with an unbundled development philosophy. By default, Snowpack's build step does not bundle many files into a single package, but instead provides unbundled ES modules that run directly in the browsers. ES Build is actually included as a dependency, but the idea is to use ES modules when you're developing locally and use ES Build only when it's necessary, like for example when you're deploying on production and need minification, code splitting, tree shaking, dead code elimination and so on. Let's set up a small project together. This example is gonna start the same way. We're creating a folder called Snowpack example. We get inside the folder and we're gonna run npm init, which will let us create another package JSON. Let's answer all the questions quickly. And now let's finally install the Snowpack itself with minus minus save minus dev so that it pops out in the dev dependencies but my laptop is super slow and recording this video and installing node modules really takes a while. So I'm gonna try to skip this. Okay, it seems like we now have Snowpack. Yay. As you can see, Snowpack is installed in dev dependencies. And just like in the previous example, where we put a custom script instead of calling the ES build from a global, is built globally, we're gonna do the same thing. So we put a start script and call it snowpack dev because that's how snowpack starts its dev, uh, development server. And of course, we're gonna use an index HTML, which basically is a simple file which says welcome to snowpack. And we should see it in the browser soon. And of course, we run npm start. Snowpack puts up a server, which automatically takes us to the browser. And as you can see, welcome to Snowpack. To uh, go one step further and see how Snowpack actually works with ES modules and JavaScript in general, and why it's so fast, let's create an index file and create another hello world index, uh, sorry, sorry, hello world JS file, which is going to be our module. And let's export the simple function, hello world, um, which actually uh, console logs out um, something like hello world from a module. From a module, exactly. And now we should import this same function in index.js. We're gonna do import hello world and it auto completes. And we're gonna call this hello world function, just like this. Let's save this function and head straight, head straight to the terminal. As you can see, it already picked up the changes and it's watching for new changes. And please don't forget to reference your index.js from the HTML. <laughs> it doesn't do it automatically. And also add the type which is going to be module so that the modern browsers understand it. And again, it picked up the changes. Now in the browser, we should see how uh, the, our text is in the console as basically appears in the console. Apparently, it also restarted the page. Let's just uh, restart it again. And we see uh, Oh, damn, I wrote hell world. <laughs> but but it worked. <laughs> I would argue that Snowpack is a great wrapper around ES Build that provides a dev server and pre-made templates for frontend frameworks. You are still free to decide whether you want to bundle your code or how to bundle it. For example, whether you want to add some CSS post-processing and so on. 
Which means if you want a tool that provides you even more than that, then you might want to take a look at Vid. It's the next tool on our list. Vid is developed by view creator Evan Yug. Don't call it Vite because they made an extra effort to put the right pronunciation in French on their website. Where ESBuild concentrates on the build step and Snowpack concentrates on the development server, Vite concentrates on both a full development server and an optimized bundling using Rollup. Basically, Vite is a tool that can be used in tiny side projects and heavy production applications. Let's actually take a look. All right, let's create a folder, Vite example. We're not gonna run npm init because Vite is gonna do it automatically. So instead we do npm create Vite latest to use the latest version of Vite and Look how nice it is. It already has many pre-selected templates and we're gonna use React and we're gonna use with we're gonna use it with TypeScript. And it also tells you which steps you need to run next. So let's get inside the Vid project. We're gonna obviously run npm install to install all the dependencies that it has. And inside the Vid project, it already scaffolded all of the files that are needed to run our application. We already have all the dependencies such as React and React DOM. It also has Vite. We also have a TS config, which means we can already start using TypeScript. And of course, we have a Vite config, which basically allows us to declare the extra plugins that we want. As I said, my laptop is super slow, so it's gonna take an eternity. So I'm just gonna fast forward. Alrighty, seems like it's installed and we we should take a look at the scripts that we have. So we have dev, uh, we have build, where it also uses TypeScript to build, and we have preview, which basically gives us a preview of the final application. Let's run the dev and it started the local host, uh, the local server in a blink of an eye which is super fast. And we also have a counter. I'm actually curious about what the folder structure looks like. Okay, seems like it's pretty basic. We have an app TSX, so we can also use TypeScript already. And we have environment variables, basically everything that we need, I would say, which is super, super, super nice. I'm really curious what it, how it actually builds the project. So let's run npm run build because we have this command in a package.json or actually, you know, as I said, my laptop is super slow, so <laughs> let's cancel it. And um, I want to check out how it actually uh, scaffolds a view app instead. So instead of choosing React this time, let's call the project view project and choose a view this time. Oh, we can also choose TS again. And now we're going to be using view with TS. Let's get inside the project. And I'm not going to install all the dependencies. I'm just curious about the code. Let's see what we have. We have app view with a template with CSS in it. And it looks really nice. Definitely give at least one of these tools a try. Maybe you eventually like one of them so much that you decide to switch as well. Anyway, if you're interested in all things web development and especially JavaScript, make sure you check out this video that I made where I talk about all the newest features that we're going to get this year. Just, just, just click it. It's here, right here.